go to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. And so this was a situation where um, tense, it was tense. Emotions were running high. The, the man blasphemed with his mouth and then cursed in the name of the Lord. And, and the congregation who witnessed it signified it so and put him to death. Blasphemy put to death. Speaking against the Lord put to death. It ought to be so in a nation where God is the Lord. Matthew chapter 12 and in verse 31. Matthew chapter 12, verse 31. Wherefore, I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. Thankful for grace. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Now look down in verse 33 and it says this. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. Look at that. The tree is known by his fruit. O generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. That is saying that what is spoken is how the heart is known. As what is born of the tree is how the tree is known. Therefore, I think what we're seeing here is that blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is for sure a sin. But what is the order of the sin that has taken place? First of all, I believe it is rejecting of the word of the Lord. Right? Because the heart is going to be where what speaks. So if somebody is going to blaspheme the Holy Ghost, somebody is going to blaspheme even the Lord in this context, it shall be forgiven. But to blaspheme the Holy Ghost is revealing something about the heart. The heart is living in blasphemy, is living in contradiction, is living against God. And so it is spoken even as what is in the heart. What happens out of the mouth indicates what type of tree it is. And here, a corrupt tree cannot bring forth good fruit, but only corrupt. Therefore, a corrupt heart cannot bring forth good words, but only a corrupt heart. And so, the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, I believe, is exactly that. It's a symptom, but it's not the sin that made the reprobate. I believe it's a symptom of the sin. And look over when we can see that take place. In verse 22, the Bible says, Then was brought unto him one possessed with the devil. Blind and dumb, and he healed him. Insomuch that the blind and the dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? Would we not rejoice to see somebody who was blind and dumb from birth see and speak and be relieved of that? That would be a wonderful, blessed thing to see our Savior do that. Is not this the son of David? Is not this the son of God? Is this not, is this not our Messiah? And what happens in verse 25 as it continues... Jesus knew their thoughts. What were their thoughts? Verse 24. When the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And so that clearly, I believe, is the indication of the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost he's talking about. Right in that same context. Attributing the work of God to the devil. Saying that Jesus does not his good works, but by the prince of the devils, Beelzebub. And yet, within that same context, remember how Romans chapter 1 says, when they knew him, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, right? Now they were thankful, therefore God gave them up, therefore God gave them up, therefore God gave them over. We have the Pharisees doing the same thing. Because look back and you'll see in verse 25, Jesus knew their thoughts, and he would often speak to that effect. Someone's thinking something like, man, this guy's, this guy's a devil. And he's like, what'd you say? Like, did you see, right? He would call them out on their thoughts sometimes, revealing that he knew their thoughts. Verse 15, you can go back, and it says, But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew and fell from thence. What did he know? That the Pharisees went out and held counsel against him, how that they might destroy them. And so not only did he know their thoughts, he knew their intentions. Well, the word of God is quick and powerful, revealing the thoughts and intents of the heart. 
Jesus is revealing himself to be the very word of God, to be as the people cried out when they saw the healing, the miracle. He's the son of David, the son of God that's here. He's our Messiah. In verse 8, look at this. For the son of man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. Justifying that he's doing the good works on the Sabbath day because he's the Lord of the Sabbath day. I can do what I will with my thing. What is he saying there? He's saying that I profess to be the Lord God here on earth. And so, God, even in this chapter, is revealing that he has shown the Pharisees to the point where they ought to know him as God. He's said it. He's done it. He's shown it. He's preached the word. He's, he's fulfilled the word. He's done divine healings. He's read their minds. He's deciphered their thoughts and intents of their heart and changed his, correct, his, his direction before they could even fall upon them. He's revealed himself. They knew he was God and yet glorified him not as God. Therefore, they reject it and the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost that happens there, that he's just a devil. He's just doing this power by the devil is just simply the, the effect of the fact that they've been given over to a reprobate mind. These are just simply showing forth that they are capable of blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. They're capable of releasing from their heart corrupt things because their heart is corrupt. They rejected God, and that blasphemy, I believe, is simply evidence of a corrupt heart. And the Bible is clear that when you have a corrupt heart, there's no forgiveness. When God gives you up, God gives you up, God gives you over to the reprobate mind to do those things, to act that way, to say these things. There is no forgiveness in this life, neither in the world which is to come. The Bible is clear here. So that's what I believe is, is, is the teaching there of the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit.